So we're on our way uh, downtown, uh, headed towards downtown to uh, meet up with my friend uh, Maurice Claret. He's going to be speaking uh, to the University of Pittsburgh football team uh, this morning. So excited to, uh, and it's cool that the uh, Narduzzi, the coach, uh, is actually a Youngstown boy and um, graduated from the same high school that I graduated from. Uh, so that'll be cool, uh, cool as well. So uh, looking forward to hanging out with uh, with the team and, and uh, making an impact. Well, we're down here at the University of Pittsburgh going to chat with the football team. Uh, I had the lovely Miss Heather Light invite me out. I've known Heather for probably 16 years now. She was the um, head of compliance at Ohio State and uh, was uh, inside of the investigation when I got suspended. So you talk about the circle of life. Uh, to have her uh, be the AD now and have me come back in here and speak to the players and encourage them, but to understand that Everything that she was trying to teach me eventually paid off, uh, but it's going to be a blessing to go ahead and come in here and try to encourage these guys. Perfect. Maurice, tell us a little bit about, you know, your grind working with the Red Zone. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a hell of a grind. You know, you're getting up every day, you're, you're trying to encourage your staff members to encourage kids to, uh, to govern themselves better. You're dealing with adults who deal with drug and alcohol issues. Uh, me dealing with it personally, you trying to let these guys know that it's possible to get your life in order. Uh, and I don't think it's anything other than uh, just the American experience, like I, I call it, you know, uh, being able just to get somebody to get themselves together. You know, I don't care what business that you're in, you're ultimately trying to govern yourself better and get yourself to better and just the red zone is a conduit to do that. So obviously you're doing that from your own personal experience, but yeah. you, you know, you didn't have the red zone when you were going through adversity. So. How did you personally make that transition? Uh, I, I think through, through friends and family. And then I think the ultimate thing is just knew you know you're better than your current situation. Uh, I think that uh, just it, through the process of getting your life together, uh, it, you just it, there's just phases that you go to and grow through. And just through making mistakes over a period of time, and you dedicating yourself and said, hey, I got I to gotta do this shit. I got to be more committed than I personally am uh, to my success, taking more responsibility and, and getting your shit together. All right, Maurice. Tell us how it went inside the, uh, inside Pitt with the with the student athletes. Uh, I went great, man. Uh, I was able to get in there and just share my experiences as uh, as a college athlete, but then also uh, I was able to um, I just talk about what it is that you know I've I've gone through, got through, learned from my experiences, and the hopes or the mission is to always uh, you know give these guys something to take away. You know, I was just trying to encourage them to take the, the schooling process a little bit more. Uh, you have to realize, you know, 2% uh, is a slim number when you're talking about, you know, collegiate athletes making it. And uh, I just, uh, hopefully I did a good job of defining that process in, uh, in a very real and raw way. What would you pass on to somebody that wasn't in that room with you? Uh, what would I pass on? I think the biggest thing is just to take the academic process a lot more serious. Um, me taking schooling and learning and educating myself serious was the biggest thing that uh, catapulted change. Uh, and I think oftentimes we sell kids a dream that, you know, just because you go to a Division One school that, you know, you have the, uh, of the, the right to go to the NFL. And that's uh, just, it's just totally not the truth. Uh, the truth is that you have an opportunity like most guys, but there's a lot of stuff that has to go right. And uh, there's a lot of stuff that has to go right that you don't have control over. And, and while you're here to be able to, to, to make the most of the situation and take, uh, you know, what's positive uh, and what helps you to move forward out of it uh, and, and to, to, to obviously build a life. You know, I made an example. I said, look at myself, I've had more success after football than I've ever had in football. I made an example of Simon. I said, hey, you know, this is a guy who's, who's wildly successful, uh, who's never been to the NFL. And um, uh, the, the main thing, even, even for young black guys, you know, just to say, hey, man, um, you know, there's, there's joy in building a life. Uh, you don't have to have everything tomorrow. You know, sometimes we have this, uh, this notion that, you know, I'll just go out here and just have everything tomorrow. I'll be a millionaire at 22 and have sex with everybody at 25 and, and drive a Ferrari at 26. And, you know, that's, that's the furthest we get with life. Uh, but there's a lot more 
Uh, there's a lot of layers, you know, and peace and harmony and, and joy and good relationships and fellowship. There's a lot of stuff uh, that, that adds on to the value of life. And I was just trying to, you know, convey that. What's the one aspect from your your athletic success that you feel applies most to, to the, the business right now? Um, what's the most thing? I, I don't know, just, just having the ability to work my ass off and, and get up when I'm hurting. You know, and I think that that's been, that's been the, just the key in my life. Um, you know, uh, I used to have a whole thing of football, you know, somebody knock you down no matter how bad you feel, get your ass up. You know, I remember uh, being knocked down uh, in the Northwestern game and the guy gave me a concussion. I couldn't even see when I got up just to psychologically tell him, like, I don't give a fuck how hard you hit me. You know, I got my eyes back up. But it's the same thing in business. The shit that always goes wrong or doesn't, it doesn't go wrong. It doesn't go how you think it should go or think or it doesn't go as you planned it to go. And, uh, and, and that's the biggest deal. But just, you know, even though it doesn't go the way that you wanted to, to or intended it to go, uh, having the ability to get up and to continue to press forward uh, is, is a beautiful deal. This kind of relates to what you were just saying from your personal experience, but, you know, Simon likes to use the term business athletes. Yes. And, and how athletes seem to perform well in business. And why do you think that is? Uh, I just think that I explained this um, earlier to somebody. Uh, that I just think athletes gain a lot just through the athletic process of becoming what they're supposed to be becoming just by understanding how to set goals, understanding how to chase something, understanding how to be accountable, understanding how to persevere through adversity, understanding how uh, just to get up and to be disciplined, to, to fight for something, to compete. And a lot of those things come from business and there's a lot of things that, you know, I think you can get it through academia coming up, but as an athlete, you're constantly day in and day out fighting and hustling and going and fighting and hustling and going. And that's part of your life. And, and, and if you can understand the skill sets that, you, that you've attained from becoming uh, an athlete and you understand how to apply those things to business, you know, sky's the limit. You know, it's all put on yourself. It's put on your own shoulders on what you want to become. What would be some of your top tips for people starting a business and, and how, how to be patient to, to you know, aim for getting what you want? Uh, to start in a business, uh, start, with some, start with something you love uh, doing. Uh, you know, start something you enjoy doing because there will become times along the process that it's just going to be hard. It's hard figuring shit out. Like, you weren't conditioned as a kid, just to, just to keep this in mind, you weren't conditioned as a kid, since you've been a kid, to become a business owner. Most people were taught skills to become employees. And so you're retraining your mind, you're retraining your life, you're retraining yourself to figure out how to employ other people. And that comes with many different jobs. You'll be HR one day, you'll be fucking payroll the other day, you'll be accounts receivable another day, you'll be uh, the fucking leader one day. And, and, and you have to realize that you have to wear all these hats and you have to live your regular fucking life. You know what I'm saying? You have to continue to do all your old shit to take care of yourself and your life and your family and everything. Then you'll have to be every staff member all in one. And that's the, that's the most daunting thing to people to like, okay, are you committed enough to, to fucking be everything in your front office until you can hire other people to, to play those roles? So you're trying to generate revenue to hire a front desk secretary. You're trying to generate revenue to get HR. You're trying to generate revenue to uh, make sure you have, uh, you're, 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 you're fiscally responsible, your accounting and your lawyers. And that shit is fucking tough. And, and, uh, and if you don't have it in you, if you don't have the grit, the grind, the sacrifice, if you don't know how to live well below your means, uh, just in case if you make a mistake, you can financially absorb it, like you'd be fucking wiped out. And so there's a lot to it, but uh, one of the greatest things you can do, man, is look at other people who, who, have, who, who are at where you want to be at, and, and what they're trying to do is to give you the information to so you don't have to absorb all of those uh, mistakes. And so, you know, you can have a, a great business idea or a great anything, uh, but you just you're, you're just misguided and and one mistake can financially fuck you up and that's that's like that's a real big deal uh, I, I seen guys with great ideas like I, I know a lady who has a great company right now I'm just thinking off the top of my head uh, but you know she she wanted to be all things to her business and for her being all things to her business they just weren't operating at, at optimal efficiencies and and she wiped herself out the most exciting thing yeah or whatever inspired you that I think what you know, I think what stands out to me is is uh, more kids need to hear what he said. More kids need to hear this message. Um, and it's and it's like it's hard to understand when you're 18 to 22. And I remember people telling me shit like that. 
And so he's going around and he's talking about, you know, if there was a 2% chance of you uh, getting on an airplane and making it to California, you know, how many of you guys would get on that flight? But there's a less than 2% chance of you making it to the NFL. And too many people bank on that one thing and they're not planning for anything else and kind of, you know, starting to think about, you know, and, and, and listen to and take advice and wisdom from people that are the resources around you that are going to set you up five years from today in your life as a student athlete versus just thinking about the, the game of football. Um, you know, but I think when you're in the game of football, if you understand how much it's going to relate to the world in business world there's lessons that can be drawn I think I directly you know have drawn the majority of my skill set in business and leadership a lot of it from sports and athletics you know the discipline of you know I remember you know the, the coach um, went to my high school and uh, you know he was talking about you know some of the players were talking about winter conditioning when they first came in they felt like was just uh, weeding people out, was kind of just trying to break you almost. Like like the, the whole, it was like, we're gonna grind so hard, we're gonna see if we can break anybody. And so I hear that in there, you'll hear that about Navy SEALs, they break you and then they kind of build you back up. And I think that's one of the reasons that athletes do well, especially collegiate athletes, you know, in our businesses because you know, it's, it's it, to get what you want out of life, the bigger the dream, the bigger the, the obstacle, and you're gonna have breaking points. And, you know, there's points in sports where you're gonna be driven to that mental place of exhaustion to where a lot of people break and they quit or they give up and other people break through. And I think that's business, is, is when people break, the ones that make it break through and other ones break. And I think a lot of that comes from, from sports and athletics. So if you can get that and understand what's going on while you're playing that sport is, you know, I'm getting up at four o'clock in the morning to work out, five o'clock in the morning to work out, and I still gotta manage a busy schedule of class and studying and film and all this stuff. All of those things will help you time management when you get out of sports. Uh, taking directions, being coachable, it's gonna help you when you get out of sports. Um, uh, discipline, you know, to everything that you're doing, being a competitor, competing, uh, competing as a team against each other and then going around putting on the same jersey and competing against somebody else, you know, so we got to compete in our business and then we got to flip around and then go compete with other people and become one team. A lot of those things you can derive and get directly from sports and, and so that's, you know, one of the things that, that stands out to me about you know what I heard in there is like if you're if you understand that's going on then that is experience that you can draw from but don't bank just on you know on on the NFL and, and stuff like that and then he was speaking about uh, your influences you know if it, it, when he started to get around more successful people and people that thought a different way you know then all of a sudden he was more committed to that lifestyle of living versus hanging around with people trying to be a gangster then that's what your actions are gonna you know be like so show me your friends and I'll show you your future I always say and it's not I said it like uh, it came directly from me I've read this in books and heard it from other mentors that if you show me the books that you read and the people you hang around, I'll be able to see a little bit into your into your future. So, you know, sometimes when I'm mentoring people, I think that they, uh, it's like, I'm, I'm telling them, you gotta read, you gotta listen to audio books. And it's like, I don't know how many of them are really getting it. And the longer it takes them to get it, a lot of them never get it. The longer it takes them to get it, the, the more they're delaying making their dreams a reality. You know, you heard Maurice sit here, you know, he was in there talking about you know, in college and stuff, he couldn't even, he wasn't even educated. Like, he, he, he couldn't even grasp the material. And I bet you if you talk to him now and put him with somebody else that's that's college educated, he will sound more educated, can have a more educated conversation with people about more things well-rounded uh, from a self-education. But this is somebody that's ripping through 30 to 50 books annually and gives a lot of the thought process and mindset credit and credibility to the books and, and, and stuff like that. Same stuff that, that, uh, that I'm pushing on people that I mentor. I just uh, wish more people would listen and buy into it.